to classic replay fans around the world, to ZX Spectrum fans, Amstrad CPC, and retro gaming fans alike, it's showtime! This is the main event you've all been waiting for. Introducing the challenger, the Amstrad CPC 464 needs no introduction. Weighing in at just under 6.6 pounds, it sugars great, albeit late, the Amstrad CPC 464! Fighting out of the opposite corner, from Sakai Sinclair, selling over 6 million units, a computer bought for your homework, we have the undisputed, homegrown British champion, lightweight computer of the world, the one, the only, ZX Spectrum! Set over 35 rounds, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, fight fans around the world, win, lose or draw, Let's get ready to rumble! Fight! Let's keep this one a nice clean fight and on with the show. And what better way to kick off than with 3D Star Strike. This game is dazzlingly well programmed with exceptional fast paced graphics. But more importantly, full of space battles. Yes, that's right, this is basically an arcade clone of Atari's sit-down arcade experience. They'd never get away with such a thing today, and why we love the 80s. But this unlicensed effort is amply rewarded because of the enjoyment the game engenders. Let's see how the Amstrad compares. First impressions are good, it's lovely and colourful, it feels just as fast as the ZX Spectrum version, maybe a tad slower, and probably a little less detail due to the low resolution. But for the time, and equally so, this was a small success for space age computer gaming. I like the choice of colour palette in this version, and the ever so slightly improved sound is welcome as well. Whilst keeping that in mind, let's go to the scorecard. Good games don't grow on trees. They have to be carefully nurtured, pruned and debugged. And despite the limitations, the obvious limitations of the ZX Spectrum, this arcade conversion of Arkanoid is ample proof that with just 48k, you really can have it all. All the good games don't have to be old, but it certainly plays that way. I missed out on a heck of a lot of schoolwork because of this game. But can it beat the Amstrad arcade conversion? Let's have a drum roll. Yes, yeah, so the first thing you notice, uh, and it can't escape the eye, is the abundance of colour. I'm not going to lie to you, there's a tiny tad little bit of slowdown here and there. But I also experienced that on the ZX Spectrum when things got a little bit busy. I mean, hey, come on, these are 8-bit machines. The main thing is, it plays identical to the ZX Spectrum and is authentic to the arcade original. It was a must-play back in the day and it's a must-own today. But over to the scorecard. My goodness, the Spanish love their punishment. This is probably one of the most difficult games I've had the pleasure to play. In fact, it's so difficult by any right, I should have just turned it off and never played it again. But 30 goes, 40 goes later, there I was still playing it. But this was kind of like a trademark for Dynamic. Uh, the games would come in two parts. Um, most people never saw the second part. In a nutshell, it's annoyingly addictive. But how does the Amstrad CPC compare? 
As you'd expect, the Amstrad is a wash through color. It's using the low res mode zero detail. And it's ticking along a little bit slower than the ZX Spectrum version. But equally, it's just as annoyingly addictive. So the same great gameplay, but colored in. It's a weird one. I mean, games are supposed to be fun, not stressful. But this kind of, I don't know, there's a steep learning curve, but it's beatable. You just have to stick with it. Let's take this to the scorecards. If you're looking for originality, don't look here. If you're looking for a beat-em-up in the style of the original, again, sorry. Perhaps you'd like vivid, colourful graphics. It's a no-go. How about variety? Guess what? But what you do get is a fairly entertaining game. There's plenty of baddies to shoot. You'll get sore eyes, possible back pain, and definitely deformed fingers. Is it worth it? Yes, I think so. It has its moments. But what about the Amstrad CPC version? As usual with the Amstrad CPC, we have colourful, attractive screens. The Sonic's comprised of pleasing little ditties and twiddly bits. It retains that addictive one more go gameplay from the ZX Spectrum. But as with the ZX Spectrum, there's a nauseating lack of originality in this game. But oh dear, I still can't complete this game. Why is every version so difficult? But whilst I'm here to technically judge the game, I'm also here to find out which is the best version. This is an absolutely brutal game on the ZX Spectrum and I love the little animation of the characters and the variety in swordplay. I must have been about 7 or 8 when I first played this and I came away absolutely shaking. It was probably the equivalent reaction when I watched my uh, first porno. <laughs> it's probably for the time the equivalent of when Mortal Kombat came about and we all remember how parents received that game. Sadly, my Maria Whitaker poster didn't last long. When I first played Barbarian on the Amstrad CPC, I played it on a green screen, and it didn't look all that great, if I'm honest. But then about six months, a year later, we got a color monitor, and it felt like a proper upgrade, going from, say, PS2 to PS3. Um, it felt that good at the time. Really impressive stuff, but whilst it had the abundance of colour, it lacked the detail of the ZX Spectrum version. Chase HQ, say no more. Probably, if not the best, arcade conversion on the ZX Spectrum. Now scrap that, it's R-Type. Now scrap that, it's Wet Le Mans. Uh, now scrap that again, it's Super Hang On. Actually, it might be Enduro Racer. Maybe that's my next video. Just look at the detail in the graphics, for goodness sake. And then ask yourself, how is this even running on a 48K rubber keyed Spectrum? No wonder there's so much rubber love out there, even today. Next up, the mighty Amstrad. I say mighty because this is an absolute Herculean effort. Look at the colours on that. It meant so much to the Amstrad community when this came out. It righted all those wrongs that US Gold had put us all through with Outrun. These 8-bit conversions are far from arcade perfect. But like the Specky version, the Amstrad version captures the spirit of the arcade original. It must be said, the Amstrad version is slightly easier than the ZX Spectrum version. I've completed the Amstrad version a dozen times, the Spectrum only once. It's a draw, both the teams are 
What a fantastic little game from Ralph Seeker. Your little ship shifts at incredible pace as it hangs and climbs and finds its way through each of the futuristic and, might I add, difficult screens. You've literally got to wreak death and havoc on anything that moves. There's lots of pickups and each weapon has its own strengths and weaknesses. The fantastic animation is there for everyone to see. And there's three levels set over several stages. It's just simply addictive and you can tell that the code is quality. But let's see how the Amstrad fares. Straight away you notice the colour. Not as detailed, but bags and bags of colour. The same great sound effects and music are on offer. And the challenge identical. Which equates to lots of effing and being. The action never lets up, not for a second. It looks good, it sounds good, and it plays superbly. There's no great urge to come back to the game once you've completed it, but there's always Cybernoid 2. There's not much in it so far, lots of draws. These systems, these two systems are so evenly matched. It really is on a knife edge and it's going to come down to something special. This is another fantastic game for the ZX Spectrum. There's no hidden levels to find, there's no secret screens. In short, Dandare 3 is great whilst it lasts. But perhaps it doesn't last quite long enough. Don't get me wrong, it's a great game. But I think it was all a little too brief and featured little replay value. Let's see how the Amstrad CPC version gets on. Like the ZX Spectrum version, there's no mutilation, no blood splatter, and zero loss of limbs. Despite this, compared to the ZX Spectrum version, it's graphically spot on. The sprites look good and the animation is excellent. Despite the restraints of the 8-bit hardware, Dandare 3 is a nice little game. It's fair to say they just don't make them like this anymore. It seems to have improved whilst in transit from the Speccy onto the Amstrad CPC. On the face of things, I don't think Dartman did as well as it deserved. I think it probably came a little bit too late and people had moved on to 16-bit. But if you did play it, or you get the chance to play it, stick with it because it's an absolute belter of a game. I mean, I say all that and I hope it's not the case because it's such a well-crafted piece of software. All the traditional side-scrolling arcade elements throughout the entirety of the game are on show for all to see. The first level is a right pig to get off there. The Amstrad CPC version is a little bit more blocky because it uses the low resolution mode zero, but the colors on display are quite good, quite effective. Some of the nicer graphic elements are saved until much later on in the game. So nice graphics, shame about the non-existent scrolling. Ah, or so I thought. Once you get past this stage, the game scrolls. I guess they did this on the first level to save memory. It's no Robocop, but I had fun playing it. I was absolutely blown away when I first saw Green Beret on the ZX Spectrum. The ZX Spectrum is a machine where platform games such as this appear to be most at home when they want to have a good time. Green Beret at the time felt like the arcade conversion to end all arcade conversions. The rules of the game are simple, there are none. You've got to steam in and steam back out, like a bank job. It looks a touch dated by today's standards, but so do you.
Nice little intro there, authentic. Initial impression, there's lots of colour, an abundance of lives, you get five. Unfortunately, the controls aren't as tight as they are on the ZX Spectrum version. To make things worse, that happens. The game doesn't scroll, it lifts and shifts. It's still a challenge if you're willing to persevere with it, but I'm not going to lie to you, Green Beret on the Amstrad is a bit of a disappointment. I don't want to be too harsh on this game because everybody seems to love it, Amstrad owners that is, but for me, in all honesty, I think I expected too much. Over to the scorecard. This ZX Spectrum version has done a decent job at emulating the arcade original. Die-hard Specky fans will still love it and enjoy the challenge. But from a completely neutral perspective of someone playing Gryzor for the first time, this ZX Spectrum version is a little bit mediocre, bare bones if you like. The game is still highly fun though, albeit in limited doses. Probably my biggest gripe is how easily you can defeat the end level base here. But it can't be that bad, I'm playing it again, 30 years later. Back in the day, my worst nightmare was an Amstrad CPC game that didn't scroll. I think Gryzor, Renegade and Target Renegade are the few exceptions. To the untrained eye, the graphics might look a bit overly colourful and garish. But for those in the know, this is the equivalent of an 8-bit Rembrandt. And despite the lack of scroll, it's still an epic arcade experience on the Amstrad CPC. However, it must be said, it is a crying shame that two players play the game alternating rather than simultaneously. Computer games, video games changed forever when Head Over Heels came out. It is a game that demanded a sequel, but it never came. If there's any preconceptions about this game being purely for kids, these are quickly discarded the moment you start playing. Computer games exist to entertain, and Head Over Heels is proof of that. The moment the game hands control to Head or Heels over to the player, an isometric discovery begins, and an experience that will live with you forever. But how did the Amstrad get on? Straight away we have more colour, same high resolution or near. There's the same willingness to learn considering the ZX Spectrum and Amstrad's limitations. The scale and variety of its content is astonishing. The game offers unique and revolutionary gameplay for the time, complex puzzles and more than 300 rooms to explore. Your quest will take you to planets such as Blacktooth, where you have to liberate the enslaved planet, Safari, Bookworld and Egyptus. I first came across Hot Shot on the front of the Amstrad Action magazine and your Sinclair. You only got the first level free. It was enough to whet my appetite and then the curiosity grew from there. I never did own this game until years later and when I did finally play it for real, um, I really enjoyed it and felt like I'd missed out. It's a good single player game, but it's an even better two player game. I like it because it's a spin on Arkanoid and addictive software have tried something different. Amazingly, the Amstrad CPC version seems to have lost some of the colour on its translation from the humble Specky, but it still offers exactly the same two player brilliant experience. It definitely looks better on the ZX Spectrum, 
Either way, it's not quite good enough to be considered an all-time classic. And as mentioned previously, it's a good single-player game, but it's an even better two-player game. Thinking back, as a kid playing this game, uh, I used to think it was well animated and the backgrounds looked really good and um, it gave a genuine sense of being there. Naturally, um, playing the game today, the underlying mechanics have clearly dated, but it remains an atmospheric little shooter. And don't quote me on this, but I only paid from memory £1.99. In today's money, that's just over £6, and still a billy bargain. So take the existing ZX Spectrum title and convert it to the Amstrad CPC, which is, I believe, what happened here. And you have the same great little game for £1.99, only this time drenched in 16 colour. The controls feel just as tight, the challenge addictive. Ultimately, for £1.99, Kane gets it right where it matters, and that's the gameplay. And don't forget, this came out in 1985. Masked Crusaders working overtime, fighting crime, fighting crime. Apologies, this game in the series makes me come over all nostalgic. When I look at the YouTube analytics, I'll see everybody just dropping off at that point. But in all seriousness, I love the first game. Uh, the second game is alright. And this third game is not a bad little blast em up. There's plenty to shoot, it's really well constructed. And the difficulty of the game is pitched just right. The sound effects are absolutely awful though, but the three levels of goodness will keep you at it. Straight away it's a little bit more colourful than the ZX Spectrum. It uses the Amstrad's high resolution mode, although it can go even higher with less colour. It's almost identical to the ZX Spectrum, although the graphics are a little bit sharper. Both the ZX Spectrum and Amstrad versions only come with one life, where the Commodore 64 version had three. But with practice, it's easily beatable. And it's Ripman United. Ripman United FC, they're by far the best team the world has ever seen. Okay, I promise no more singing throughout the rest of this video. But back in the day, I absolutely loved this on the ZX Spectrum. This, without question, was the FIFA of our day. Or for those who hate FIFA, International Superstar Soccer. The only thing that I can think of for the time that let this game down was probably the sound. But what happened to match day three? Gordon Bennett. This looks even better than the ZX Spectrum. You can intercept the ball with your head, knees, feet and bum. For a long time this was probably the best footy game on the CPC. It's the slowest of the lot, but the action does become furious on later levels. The graphics can sometimes have a weird semi-transparent feel to them. And it's a great feeling once you finally work out how to put the ball in the back of the net. This is one I remember playing extensively as a kid. 
This one might have passed people by. It came out quite late, about 1989. I paid 199 for it. And whilst it doesn't look great and there's a little bit of lack of animation, I played this for absolute hours on end. In fact, it's better than most full price games of the day. So it's not very sophisticated. You've definitely seen better, but I like it. It looks more colourful than the ZX Spectrum version. I think there's slightly more animation on the character. I can't be sure, but it looks to run at the same sort of speed as the ZX Spectrum version. And I don't know if it's because I played the ZX Spectrum version first back in the day and gotten worse as a gamer. But this is bloody difficult. I can't get anywhere. It's certainly not through lack of trying. But the guy who programmed this went on to program Hideous. Say no more. What a fantastic game this was back in the day. There's no question this is based on the arcade game, uh, Painter, so it's a chase game. Uh, I think it's sometimes called Amadar in the arcades, but um, you not only have to escape from the pursuing creatures, but also uh, turn squares and rectangles to different colours by drawing the lines around them. The game combines speed with the necessity to recognise patterns of movement and to think strategically. I absolutely love this on the Amstrad CPC. It came with the Amsoft uh, £100 of uh, free software. Each level provides an increasing number of pursuers, uh, different grids to traverse. I guess it's a variation on the basic theme, Quicks, in uh, which you chase by, well, instead of blobs, by mummies, uh, while attempting to trap a moving bundle of lines by drawing rectangles around it. Everybody in my family absolutely love this and my uncle would play it until the wee hours of the morning. Classic carnage coin-up conversion for the ZX Spectrum. Use keys, joystick or light phaser and rescue those hostages. This is absolutely masterful programming and for the time I can't see how they could have bettered this. There's tons of atmosphere and the playability is just spot on. It's almost arcade perfect. You literally have to shoot everything including the birds and pigs that scamper across the screen that give more ammo. Come of the hour, come of the Amstrad. Special mention has to be made to the quality of graphics on the Amstrad CPC. The same great atmosphere, playability, animation and attention to detail in the ZX Spectrum version can be found here also. If only all Amstrad arcade conversions were made this way. The Amstrad proves here that it can match the Spectrum for scrolling and this game was perfect back in the day if you really enjoyed a bit of mindless violence on your Amstrad. Now this is the ZX Spectrum 128K version. Outrun needs no introduction to the gaming fraternity. US Gold published this, Probe did the programming, and I think they did an all right job. Don't get me wrong, um, you'd never play this after playing the Sega Saturn version or what you can get today on the Nintendo Switch. But for 1987, and this was before Chase HQ came about, I had fun. There's nothing 
wrong with the Amstrad CPC version? Well, retract that statement. It's completely wrong. But I think it's because they ran out of time. Because it feels and plays unfinished. Had they released a 128K version and included the music from the um, arcade, optimized the code, and given a few more bells and whistles with the odd crash here and there, I think we'd have had a winner. first casualty of war on the ZX Spectrum are the graphics. Despite this, it zips along nicely, there's detail aplenty, and the challenge is phenomenal. Once upon a time, I had to use a map to play this, but the game now is mapped into my, etched into my memory, like looking at the back of my hand. And because of that, it's kind of not as much fun, but that just tells you how much I've played it. It's an absolute classic. Unfortunately, although there's an abundance of colour, it's a bit garish in the Amstrad CPC version. And it kind of like blocks some of the bullets, the visibility of bullets and traps on the floor. But in no time your eyes adjust to it and it's the same great challenge that you get on the ZX Spectrum. It probably runs a little bit, tiny bit slower than on the ZX Spectrum, but it's hardly noticeable. In my personal, humble opinion, this is one of the best games you can get. Best arcade conversions for the ZX Spectrum. Yes, I know Bubble Bobble was amazing, Flying Shark was brilliant, Enduro Racer was amazing as well. But the challenge here involved in this game and the length and breadth of it is just simply unbelievable. To fit this into 48K, wow. And the 128K version even gives you music. When I think back, I have to pinch myself to believe this game ever existed. Head blown. When I saw this, I loaded it up. The loading screen was really colourful. And the game itself, highly playable. And look at those colours. There's some sprite flicker, but it's all gameplay. It's arcade faithful. And the end of level baddies are there. In all their glory. And... What can I say? It's just, it's just memorable. It brings back so many memories of being a child. Wonderful, wonderful memories. I've been massively hooked on anything Rambo since seeing the first movie, Rambo First Blood Part 1. Rambo 2 and Rambo 3 were absolutely bizarre, as mad as a box of frogs. And I loved Rambo 2 on the Commodore 64 and Rambo 3 on the Sega Mega Drive. Absolutely brilliant, immense stuff. This wasn't an instant favourite of mine when I first bought it, but it's one that grew on me over time. And I even go back to it today. I can't put it down. Again, it's basically the ZX Spectrum version with colour. The programmers have done a fine conversion. And because of the aesthetics, I think I prefer playing this version over the ZX Spectrum. But that's just a personal thing. There's lots to do in this game. There's even an Operation Wolf style arcade section. The reality is, you'll need to map this game but it's an absolute wonderful experience. If you've not invested the time in this game thus far, I urge you to do so. It's a draw, both the teams are even. They split the points and now
Bone crunching, gratuitous violence on the ZX Spectrum. Fight through the alleyways, the subways, and the well lit city streets. Win the girl and claim her as your property. I mean, uh, trophy. Oh boy. You know what I mean. Anything goes in the street brawler from Tato, converted by Imagine Ocean to the ZX Spectrum. The graphics, atmosphere, music, sound effects are really impressive. And I wager that this is better than the arcade original. For me, this is absolutely unbelievable. Grittier than the ZX Spectrum version. Some find the arcade controls awkward. I personally found them innovative and massively authentic. They tried to dumb down on the violence because of complaints. They changed the blood from red to blue. Thankfully, the program has left in a quick key press that changes it back to red. If it were up to me, and it is, I'd choose this for the same reasons you chose Mortal Kombat on the Mega Drive over the SNES. Target Renegade actually takes the original, builds upon it, and produced an essential sequel. It does everything right. It's an absolute masterclass in ZX Spectrum programming. The first time I played Target Renegade on the ZX Spectrum, I was absolutely blown away. I couldn't believe what I was experiencing. You could pick up items, and in my personal humble experience and opinion, it plays better than Double Dragon in the arcade. What a crying shame about Renegade 3 then. Although not as refined in the graphics department as the ZX Spectrum, this is the same great code and the same great game as seen on the ZX Spectrum, although a little bit slower. The sprites have lost the fantastic detail of the original and the backgrounds feel a little barren, but there's now more moves, more animation and you can pick up weapons. Amstrad owners don't get the little animation with the phone box at the end of each stage, but what they do get is another amazing beat em up for the micro. Without question, my favorite arcade conversion to the home micro. The ZX Spectrum graphics, although detailed, are uh, monochrome. It's like they couldn't be bothered with the color, which is a shame really because they've done this to avoid color clash, and I don't mind it. Just look at R-Type. Still, that can't destroy such a fantastic arcade conversion. And this game is immense fun, highly playable whilst it lasts. If there is a problem, it's that I completed this game on my second go. It's a lot blockier than seen on the ZX Spectrum, but the abundance of colour is there for everyone to see. It plays identical to the ZX Spectrum, shares the same great moments such as in the alleyway, all the puzzle sections are there, end of level bosses, and phenomenal upgrades in the weapons. The music is some of the best I've heard in an 8-bit game, and this is more of a challenge than on the ZX Spectrum in regards to difficulty levels. Very difficult to choose a winner here. If you can see past the colour, or lack of, this plays identical to the arcade original and gives the Amiga 500 version a run for its money. The speed is there, the animation on the sprites is brilliant, the upgrades are all included. I'm not sure what else they could have done to uh, improve on this. The difficulty level is set just right. And if you can do well at the ZX Spectrum version, you can do well at the arcade as well.
This should have been brilliant. Unfortunately, as we've seen too much in the past, the speed has slayed yet another potential great game. I don't know if it's just too much for the humble Amstrad CPC to handle, but we didn't have these problems in other games such as Rainbow Islands, so I imagine it's down to the optimization of the code. It's still enjoyable to play, but difficult to play if you've experienced the arcade original or ZX Spectrum. Without question, the best place to play supercars is on the Atari ST and the Amiga 500. But, like me, if you were on a budget back in the day and had the ZX Spectrum or the Amstrad CPC, this was still a great place to race. I guess the other thing to remember is we were kids back then. We didn't own a car, we didn't have a driving license. And so to play something like this, or the other uh, Gremlin graphics games at the time, which gave us access to lots of different cars and their various setups, which probably served to prepare us for later life, and one day owning our own car. For the Amstrad CPC, we have the same uh, great game, same great layouts, all the uh, tracks that you get in the ZX Spectrum are here as well. Nothing has been sacrificed, and you even get an extra splash of colour. I think this is a game on the Amstrad that would have um, benefited from Mode Zero and 16 colour. But you know what they say, you can't have it all. Let's cut straight to the meat. Super Hang On on the ZX Spectrum is a terrific game. It's just as playable as its arcade parent. Nothing gameplay wise is missing from the uh, arcade conversion, apart from the superlative graphics, the soundtracks, and handlebars. To this day, Super Hang On on your ZX Spectrum remains a nice little arcade racer. There's nothing even remotely realistic about the experience, it's just pure arcade adrenaline fun. The bloody thing takes ages to load though. Sadly, they haven't even attempted to fill this one with a bit of colour. It's a blatant specky port, straight from the specky code. And whilst it remains an addictive game on the Amstrad CPC and there's nothing quite like it, it loses out a little bit in the speed department and comes packed with some graphical glitches that see Baker just appear and disappear from one side of the road to the other. Despite all its faults, it's still a highly playable and addictive game on the Amstrad CPC. This is one of my favourite racing games, favourite Formula 1 games on the ZX Spectrum. For me, for a humble 8-bit machine, this is racing at its best. It's a fantastic translation of the arcade coin-up original, and with the graphical superlative uh, intros as well, it's just essential, it's fantastic stuff. Obviously the Sega Mega Drive version outside of the arcade blows every other conversion away but I still really enjoyed this. After playing the ZX Spectrum version my hope was that US Gold could strike gold twice. To a large extent and to the untrained eye it looks as though they did but unfortunately and it pains me to say it suffered some of the worst collision detection uh, in and around corners that I've ever experienced in a racing game on the Amstrad CPC. That's not to say there isn't a challenge here with this game. In fact, uh, it's really difficult to see things through until the end. It's just the lack of game testing ruins the experience.
There's nothing special about tank. Uh, it's just a good pick up and play. Um, no nonsense arcade game. What I like about it is the variation in enemy, the sprites, and the multi directional scroll. You have to deal with ground troops as well, otherwise, they'll attack you and blow you up. And although it's not as difficult as I'd like, it's still a really good challenge whilst it lasts. It's not a bad game, it just won't hold your attention for weeks on end. The Amstrad CPC version is more of the same stuff. I love the smooth scrolling, the uh, multi-directional scroll in this game. And I remember back in the day, um, other software companies stating that they just couldn't get the Amstrad CPC to scroll. Uh, look at this. This came out in 1987 as well, early 1987. So kudos here for the programmer getting this to scroll. This is another great port of the arcade coin up to the ZX Spectrum. It might not look or sound the part, but it's one of the best ports available. It's really fast, but not fast enough to be unplayable so. And if you've ever wondered whether you'd make a good barman, now's your chance to find out. For me, although a highly fun game, it's all work and no play. Tapper on the ZX Spectrum is easily one of the most inventive, fun and challenging games you can find. Alcoholics might want to avoid this one. I did actually work for a brewery. I was a drayman, which is the guy that delivers the beer and drops it down the cellar. And like this game, I really enjoyed that job, apart from now my back is killing me. But it's the same great stuff that you got on the ZX Spectrum. It's a fantastic arcade port. If there is to be uh, any criticism, it's that the game can sometimes slow a little bit, but it's very rare and um, it really is a fantastic arcade port. For those of you who have stuck around and seen it through to the death, we are almost at the end now. And I think it's safe to say no matter who wins, it's been a good fight. I think it's safe to say overall, this is a faithful arcade conversion for the ZX Spectrum. And in the words of Your Sinclair, Xevious is fast, vicious and enthralling. For me, it definitely lacks the flash and frenzied pace of the arcade original but it's still a great game for the ZX Spectrum. This is probably one of those rare occasions for Amstrad CPC users to wish they'd have received a ZX Specky port instead. In the immortal words from Amstrad Action, it's not as good as Light Force. I'm sure there's people out there that might appreciate this port, where I suspect others might find the game a bit too slow and a bit simple compared to the arcade original and other ports. Saying that, if I'd have picked this up for $1.99 or $2.99 back in the day, I'd have been happy. This one is a combat game where all 8-bit arcade conversions um, were respectable. There's 16 possible moves, two different backgrounds, and one of the best combat challenges I can remember from the 1980s. I wish we had more colour in this game, but as you can see the animation is fantastic, with a level of detail that can't be sniffed at. And I prefer this game over the way of the exploding fist, and that's really saying something. 
This is the version I owned as a kid and absolutely loved and still love until this day. It's as good as an arcade version could be on the Amstrad CPC considering the limitations of the screen and 64K. And I can't think of too many games on the Amstrad CPC that can be compared to this. When you play Ye Are Kung Fu 2, you wonder if this was a fluke or not. Kudos to the programmer and a benchmark set for all of the games. Last but not least, we have this excellent game from the Pickford Brothers that was released for Mastertronic. The ZX Spectrum has extra animations over the Amstrad CPC version and it's a game that I think has to be considered for one of the best, most addictive budget games of all time. It's so simple but really stunning, so the Pickford Brothers uh, kudos has to go out to them because they understand, understood game design. I hope back in the day this is a game that sold bazillions. I'm happy to report for those that don't know that Zub on the Amstrad CPC is everything and every bit as enjoyable as on the ZX Spectrum. In fact I think this, um, Dr. Destructo and Fly Spy uh, from Mastertronic are probably amongst my favourite. It's only when I play games like this on the ZX Spectrum and Amstrad CPC that I feel lucky to have owned uh, and played these 8-bit systems. I hear it's well presented on the Commodore 64 as well, but more of a take it or leave it. Wow, I can't believe I'm at the end. It's taken me almost two weeks on and off to do this video, but it was well worth it in the end.